Hi, Mike here, and I want to talk to you about Boozy Jerky. You might have heard Big Ray and I talk about Boozy Jerky on the podcast or seen us post about it on our social media. Boozy Jerky is beef jerky infused with craft beer, and they have a variety of great flavors that you can get shipped directly to you. They've been awesome enough to give us a discount code to pass along to you and whoever you want to pass it along to after that. What you need to do is go to boozyjerky.com, pick out all the different beef jerky you want, add it to your cart. When you go to checkout, you use the code CBBL22. Again, that's CBBL22. And that's going to get you 10% off your entire order. And then you get craft beer infused beef jerky shipped directly to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Craft Beer Bucket with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. Wham, bam, shalam, bam, bam, Mike. We're going to talk about stouts tonight. You ready to talk about stouts, Mike? I'm excited for stouts. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ever see the Micro Machine Man when you were little on TV? Oh, uh, yes. That dude talked like 800 miles an hour. Yeah, that's what you just reminded me. You know, kind of, yeah. (laughs) Uh, oh, dude. Okay. I'm ready for tonight's, but I got to tell you something else though. Right. Um, so Friday night I took the girls, the two kiddos, yeah. uh, to downtown Russellville and we watched the original live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Whoa. Did it blow yeah. their minds? No, it did not blow their minds, but oh. I'll say that I'll, it held up surprisingly well. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Did you watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when you were a kid? Yes. Okay. Um, so you, you've seen this movie and you may not remember it specifically, oh. but you've seen it. It's, um, like, I just remember I, so as we were watching it, I was like, you know, this is obviously dated, but not right. as bad as I thought it would be. Cause so that came out, what, like 1992, 90, 1990. Oh man. I, I think it's in the eighties, dude. Okay. I could be, yeah. Maybe. I mean, so right. Here, I'm going to Google it right now. Cause I don't know. Yeah. Google I'm it up. My iPhone. Cause uh, I want to know. Grab my phone because I want to know. I do. Um, it, so anyway, I was watching it and it's obviously dated, but like I said, it held up much better than I thought it would because I thought I was like, my kids are going to trash this because this is going to be the worst. And actually, they were like, eh, it wasn't that bad. You know, of course, they're, you know, they're used to dad taking them to dorky stuff anyway, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Uh, 1990. 19, okay. I, it's somewhere, okay. I knew it was somewhere right in that range. I don't know. Wow, I was nine. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, that takes me back. So Micro Machines, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, let's talk about our sticker sponsor. You want me to do it? You want to do it? Sure. No, go for it. Sticker sponsor time. I just made, I just made that uh, up. That What do they call that? S- sound effect. Sound effect. There you go. Sound, sound effect, yeah. So anyway. Our sticker sponsor for tonight is Crystal Ridge Distillery at Hot Springs, Arkansas. You can find them at, or just type in crystalridgedistillery.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Crystal Ridge Distillery. They're at 40, they're at 455 Broadway Street there in Hot Springs. 455 Broadway Street in Hot Springs. Actually, have you, have you been to Hot Springs? Yes, several times. Uh, yeah, it's Last a cool spot. Last time with you earlier this year. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that fishing trip. Yeah, fishing trip, bro. It's a cool spot, man. I like I like Hot Springs. Uh, the Crystal Ridge Distillery is a cool addition to the area. So, yeah, we appreciate them providing us enough stickers that we can continue to hand them out. Heck yeah! Um, and then uh, you never know if we get if we get a good uh, response. If I give all these out pretty quickly, I'm sure they'll give us more. You know, it's it's marketing for them. Oh, heck I, yeah. I don't want to sound I don't want to sound too like you know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be I'm too mean. Uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to provide stickers because it's fun. Stickers are fun. All right, Bray. Uh, let's let's talk about our beers. You know what else is fun for me, Mike? Sure. That. I knew it. All right. I got to do mine. Let me get it over here. A one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Hmm, solid. Just a little bit got on me. 
Hmm. It's not so bad. So obviously this is going to be a, a, a stout episode. We each have our own stout tonight. You know, I'm drinking a beer from uh, the Alpine Beer Company out of Alpine, California. I'm having the cake and bake. It's a pastry stout. Bake. Yeah, I love it, it dude. There's a uh, a cupcake on the can, and for its frosting, it's uh, it's on fire. I love the the can art here. You're like, look, mom, that's, it's cake and bake, and I helped. That's right. It's by Alpine Beer Company. Oh my god! I just took a drink. It is Alpine. Oh Out of man, Alpine, California, eh? bro. The total total motor oil dessert beer. Word. Oh, dude, I could drink one of these every day. Well, oh. I'm drinking. Can I introduce my beer, sir? Please and thank you. Yeah, I'll shut up now. Sorry. That's all right. I'm having take my heart. Uh, Take My Heart is a stout, a milk stout. Uh, They said it tastes like chocolate-covered cherry, or it has chocolate-covered cherry in it. That's what's going on here. By Social Project Brewing out of Bentonville, Arkansas. Isn't that cool? Bentonville. That is cool. I've heard some great things about this brewery. I haven't been there yet, but since it's in Bentonville, I believe I must go. It is a yeah. tasty, tasty beer, sir. You know, we visited several breweries together in Northwest Arkansas for the Arkansas um, Beer Cast, and we had that project. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, that might be a cool beer destination. It's close enough for the both of us, and we could hit up so many breweries. Um, yes, we could. I'm I sorry, feel I had like a big that's. <laughs> no, you're fine. But I mean, we, we've hit several cities together now. It's like, why not? Why not Bentonville, Fayetteville, you know, Springdale area, and uh, just have there, a, there's a lot there's good time. Yeah, there's a lot up there. There's so many, dude. But you know, I was telling somebody else. Some, uh, where was I at? I think I was at. My, so I recently went to a conference in Knoxville, Tennessee, and they were asking about Arkansas. So people that aren't so that aren't familiar with this part of the country. And I'm, I'm including like Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, maybe not Texas so much, but definitely those three, maybe Kansas and Missouri as well. They really have no idea what's going on over here. And, and no. I don't mean to be mean. They just like you talk to people and they're like, you mean they have mountains in Arkansas? Yes, full. They have mountains. You mean they have forest? Yes, full. They got forest. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the same thing, you know, I thought, you know, I did the same thing and, uh, you know, being from Oklahoma, I love sharing Oklahoma stories and whatnot too, but people are amazed. They're, they're like, I thought Oklahoma was one giant wheat field. No, dude, it's not. No, no, no. It's two giant wheat fields and one of them's full of cows. I mean, it's- <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we've got at least four wheat fields. I just, anyway. Everybody, everybody has seen, I guess, have seen pictures of what I would call Southeast Arkansas, the River Delta area. And they just think that's what all of Arkansas looks like. And it, and while that area has got its own history, culture, history, you know, culture and all that kind of stuff, it's cool. That's not what Arkansas is. And so anyway, get back to my point, I guess, is I was talking about Northwest Arkansas. I said, you know, you know, individually, the cities are not. Or, or decent size, but as a metro area, it is the most populated area of the state. Right. And, th- and that blew people's minds. And I was like, well, it's, you know, in my opinion, I guess, is it's it's Walmart has changed the, the landscape up there, really, right. like literally and figuratively. Right, right. So oh, it's true. Very true. Uh, then I talked about uh, Crystal Bridges Museum, which is a, you know, in- international destination for art. Right. And then I talked about how Big Ray used to work there in the Northwest Arkansas area. And now he was my bestie and he worked and lived in this area. So we should go see that. That's right. See? Yeah. A lot of stuff there. We should we should go find your former residence and put up like a plaque. <laughs> you oh, know what I mean? I, I bet that apartment complex would love that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just I just thought about that. Wouldn't that be great to like get a plaque made like um 
whatever the dates were like June 1st, uh, 2002 to, uh, <laughs> May, t- May 30th, 2003, one or whatever, three, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. And then oh, they say here lived Mr. Ray Neal, uh, best known for craft beer bucket list and <laughs> biggest Ray Ray on YouTube. I mean, whatever you got to make it look official is now is now designated an important historical and cultural site. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. If we could like show up in like worker uniforms and just like, you know, attach it and people be like, what the hell? Be like, no, this is, this is what we were told to do. Like they wouldn't yeah. know it was us, right? They ask your name. Right. You can say, they're like, who are you? I'm Nay Real. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm Brad Michaels. Oh man, so incognito with that. Yeah, no one would ever guess. Like we could put on some fake mustaches on top of our real mustaches. See, I've got uh, a great, I've got a great game plan. You would be a wonderful international spy. <laughs> <laughs> like wow, I couldn't do it. I couldn't Total be serious long enough. Yeah, super spy, super spy. Yeah, so we should do that. I think we, I think that's. Even even if it gets taken down, we could you, you get your friend Jose. He could videotape yeah. the whole thing. He could. Yep. And you know, and we could tell people like he's you know recording this for posterity and proof of installation. That's right. Dang. We should do it. <laughs> I'm we could do it. To, to. <laughs> we could also do it to <laughs> your. Uh, <laughs> we we could do it to your duplex and prior too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude, that is still there. Oh, I'm sure it is. I don't know how. It was yeah. run down when I lived in it uh, 25 <laughs> years ago. Or maybe not that long, 23 years ago. Oh my gosh. No, 20, I was 20 when I lived there. So 21 oh, yeah, years ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So anyway, Mike, uh, uh, tell, tell me yeah. about your beer, man. Let's circle back to the beers. Oh yeah, sorry. I was having fun. Uh, so social project brewing out of Bentonville. Arkansas, take my heart. It's a milk stout. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's, it's got a little bit more of that chocolate, that dark chocolate flavors about it. They're, they're real mild. Um, this beer is pretty smooth. Uh, you know, it's, it's got the sweet factor with the lactose sugar and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's kind of what I expected. Um, the, the tartness from the cherry is coming through a little bit. The cherry flavor, uh, I'm not getting as much as I would have expected. I don't know what I expected, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of very faint. Um, but I do like to, you know, like I said, told you before, I like to have my beers uh, warmed up a little bit as I, as I drink them with the stouts to see how the flavors migrate and shift. But so far, I mean, it's good. It's, it's a good beer. I don't mind it one bit at all. What about you, sir? So, I mean, like I said, this is total dessert beer for me. It's it's very sweet, which I like. It's got some nice coffee and roasted notes, but it really tastes kind of like a cupcake. Like that is there. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had a way to describe more of how the, the, the flavor is incorporated into the stout, but you drink yeah. it and it's just, it's there. Right. So obviously this is going to be, it's full bodied. It's creamy. It's like drinking a cupcake. How else can I say it? Um, Remember that beer we had that tasted like a cinnamon bun? Oh yeah, that from, was from Boulevard. Boulevard, I think. Yeah, yeah, man, that was that was next level good. It was that was it's, yeah. it was like drinking a cinnamon bun. This yeah. is like drinking a cupcake. Yeah, not quite as sweet as a cupcake, but it's it's definitely there. But getting there, it's in the ballpark. Yum yum yum. As this is kind of gently warming up, I think some of the cherry, either I'm getting used to it or the, the cherry flavors are becoming a little bit more present. It's coming out a little bit more. I like the fact that it's, um, it's what I would call the Michigan cherry uh, flavor, like where it's, you know, like more along the lines of cherries you'd find in a cherry pie kind of flavors. Oh, right on. Versus like the cherry soda you would get. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, what's, what's, is it cheer wine that's cherry flavored? Yep. That's a cherry flavored soda. Yeah. Know, what, Tennessee or North Carolina, something like that. Yeah. 
But yeah, this is this is a uh, pretty cool. I think you know. So when I noticed when I got this, the, the, I looked at the different beers, and they've all got pretty interesting pieces of art. This has got a, a young boy and a young girl that look like they're from like I don't know, like the forties or fifties. He's in his long sleeve shirt with the bow tie, but um, they're on a boat, and uh, he's got the two paddle hand, like a rowboat or whatnot. He's he's paddling, and she's got a little umbrella over her to shade her from the sun. It's pretty cute for, uh, and, and I'd, I'd like to know the story behind how they came up with take my heart for this. Cause I think it's a, it's a cute name and it's a cute picture. So I'm sure there's gotta be a story with it, but well done. It's a cool little, and in, in the, in the style of their artwork is, uh, you know, it's the same theme across all their artwork, so to speak. So I like that too. And I like the beer. It tastes really nice. So I, I've got to ask you this. Mm. I'm going to preface with it right now. It's it's uh, mid to late September 2022. Yeah. And in Oklahoma today, it reached 100 degrees. Ooh, uh, yeah. Which, which is kind of weird. It, it, the sun is setting earlier. We had our sunset before 8 o'clock tonight, but it was still so this ugly hot outside. And I like I'm drinking this beer, you know, in the air conditioned, you know, climate of my home office slash studio, and I'm I'm warming up on the inside from drinking this beer, right? And this is what I want come winter when it starts to cool off. And it's just again, we've talked about this several times this year. We just had a really hot summer, and we've enjoyed stouts, but it's like, man, this makes me want winter and fall so much more. Especially as I'm warming up on the inside from this. I mean, are are you feeling the same way? Um, I, I'm definitely not wanting winter, but I could see this as a good fall beer, uh, sit by the campfire beer. And I look forward right to that where I can have a campfire out, campfire outside and it's still a little chilly. You got to wear a hoodie. Yeah, man. Like I'm, yeah. I'm so desperate for that this year because I'm ready to light up the fire pit and I yeah. want those, you know, those, those spicy beers, these stouts, and I want a block of cheese and I want to use my Blackstone and grill some stuff. And yeah. I don't know what a block of cheese has to do with any of that, but I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know, Mike, but I, I, just, I want that so much and uh, I'm ready for it. And this beer is really making me want it even more. Yeah. All I'm getting at. No, I mean, I, I feel you. I feel My you, favorite sir. time of the year, dude. Fall, especially absolute favorite time of the year. And as we move into the holiday seasons, it just strikes a, an emotion. I don't know how to explain it, dude. I'm not good with emotions, but. There's just a feeling that, that comes around the holiday season, and I so look forward to that. Yeah. And I like to accompany that with, you know, this style of beer, dude. You know what I think about when I think about fall? Do you? Tell me. No, tell me. Dallas Cowboys football. Oh, and and there is that. Yeah, or football. You know, I, I, I get a lot of flack because I, I don't follow college football as closely as a lot of people. People are like, why? Right. And I'm like, I just don't. I mean, it's most of the time on Saturdays, I'm just, I'm just doing other stuff. And, and uh, like this Saturday morning, I went out fishing. I got back. Uh, I took the kids to, to work. We did a recruitment video for my work thing. Uh, or not a video, a recruitment event for my work thing. Uh, then took them out to eat because they were, you know, they were pretty good all day. So I took them out for dinner. Uh, so it was just a busy Saturday. Now I looked at my scores. Right. To make sure that Oklahoma State Cowboys, you know, did okay. But I care about NFL more than anything, and I follow NFL more than I do anything. And the Dallas Cowboys, backup with a backup quarterback, Cooper Rush, last minute drive, game winning drive down the field to kick a field goal and win it. Heck yeah, man. That's awesome. It's, it's pretty impressive. Um, and I'm, you know, I know I'm very cautiously optimistic. I want the Cowboys to win, but I know the reality that, you know, it may not be here a year again, but. <laughs> right. You know, you, you know, never I'm know. I'm a Dallas fan. It's like, I'm not as big a fan as you are. Like, if right. I watch football, I tend to watch Dallas games. Right. You know, I watched the game two weeks ago where Dak hurt his thumb. That made yeah. me sad. Um, I didn't get to watch the game yesterday. I had a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to see any games at all yesterday. Uh, but I'm with you. I keep up with it a little bit, but I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, admittedly not the biggest, biggest fan. 
There's like I'm, just, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I just don't get I don't keep up with it, right? Right. Uh, I just when I think of when I think of fall, I think of campfires, football, beers, hunting season starting. So I'll, I'll get to start hunting pretty soon for deer and um, stuff like that. So it's a good time of year. I don't yeah, like man. winter. Like the the January, February, early March just can really just I don't like it. And I know it has to happen. And like the the outside natural resources person inside of me understands it all. It's just cold. And I don't like being cold. Oh, I guess. Like, I love the snow. I wish we got like five feet of snow at a time, dude. I love it. That's where you and I disagree. And I'll still wear my shorts. I don't care. You probably would. I I, I do. I wear shorts year round. I put on snowshoes or snow boots with my shorts. I don't care. I go around Walmart like that, the grocery store. It's like that's what I do. That's just me as a person. I'm 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 that guy. That's I'm not okay. the polar bear club dude because jumping into icy cold water to me, like y'all, y'all are nuts. I'm not that level, but I like the cold, dude. I look forward to it. Well, um, you know, I, what I, another thing I like about fall and winter is like you get a you really do get a explosion. An explosion, not a explosion, an explosion of new beers. Yes. Like you get all the Oktoberfest beers, then the pumpkin beers, oh, yeah. then the winter beer or the Christmas beers, the holiday beers, and the, the you know, the, the wit beers start coming out. I mean, like it just boom, it's, boom, boom. And it's like, it's like the who's who of great beers coming out. I can't wait. Right. And it, I love that too, man, because like the, the history channel side of me comes out because you have to think back in the day. Before electricity and television and all the modern conveniences we have now, what else was there to do? A bunch of guys right. sitting around drinking beer. Like, what other beer can we make? Right. I can only assume, right? Like, I haven't exactly studied it. I'm not an expert in this, but I can imagine. <laughs> and uh, like, let's let's make a let's let's make a wit beer. Because why not? Now, let's make a, another Marzen. Because why not? Because let's not? have a. Because we already have a Belgian Dubel. Let's make a triple today, Steve. Or a quadruple. Oh, wait. No, a double dog dare you. Let's, <laughs> let's quad this yeah. up right now. Like, no, I hey, agree. Hey, Eli, what do you think? Eli. Uh, I'm with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing out names. <laughs> right? Oh but God. I'm seeing this play out in my head. What like, do you think, doing- Ezekiel? Shall we make the stout? Hark, <laughs> hark, sir, Eli. I believe we shall. Hi. <laughs> By the beard of Zeus. And when they and they, when they raise their hands to cast their vote, every time it was a yes. 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 And that's in my, I like to use my imagination with this, you know, um, but I could see them all sitting around with their Wiener Sistles on a stick. <laughs> Around a giant campfire, and uh, I know that's silly. I know it's silly, dude. But I like—I have my imagination. It's mine. I know it's weird. Whatever. But it's your imagination. I like to see it you do with what you like want. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man, it's good times. We should probably rate this beer, give it a song, and get we on should. our way. <laughs> Mike's like, uh, we're not letting Ray talk anymore. No, <laughs> it's more along the lines of, um, you know, we've been at this for twenty-two minutes, and. Uh, you know, it's about time. It is. People don't like to listen to me for very long. I found that out a long time ago when I was That's dating, what, you know, or, the, oh, you know, yeah. the dating life when I was younger, people are like, oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Wow. <laughs> this is, this guy's worthless. No, I, <laughs> I'm, kill, I'm, I'm cracking myself up. No, you go ahead. Rate the beer and give it a song. All right. So, for what it is, and again, it's a pastry stout. It's I'm just reading right off the can. It's listed as a as a stout brewed with cocoa nibs, brown sugar, and lactose. It has all the above. Again, tastes a lot like cupcakes going down. Like the can art, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. I really, very much enjoyed this beer. I mean, that's a pretty good rating. That is a good rating, man. Again, that's the cake and bake by. Alpine Beer Company, their pastry stout. And I like this came in a pint can, 8% ABV. 
A new year so coming out of baked I cake. Could have, I could have a couple of these easily. It's sweet, but it's not over the top sweet. It's, I could go on and on, dude. It's 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 great. Yeah. You remember that song? If I knew you're coming out of baked cake, baked a cake. I don't know that song. I might Google it up. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a real like I remember learning it when I was young. Right. But but it's a real song. By Eileen Barton. Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the YouTube link, just to prove a point. So anyway, carry on with your yourself. <laughs> no, you're fine, man. You're fine. So anyway, what what song are you gonna pair with this? So I am, man. I'm. Let me come I'm, back to you. You know what, dude? I, I'm going to go old, older country here, Mike, which is not yeah. what I normally do. But you I'm going to go with a song by George Strait, and it's called Chill of an Early Fall. And that's because I'm hopeful, dude. No, I like that song. It's a great song, but it's like, man, I'm so desperate for fall, dude. And this yeah. beer really just makes me crave it. And for whatever reason right now, it, it fits. If nothing else, the title. Don't listen to the lyrics. It's just the title. I'm ready for yeah. early fall, my dude. All right. So Ray gave it a nine out of 10 paired to George Strait's chill of an early fall, the cake and bake by Alpine beer company. All right. So tell us what you got, Mike. I've got the social project brewing. Take my heart. It's a, uh, milk stout, uh, with black, uh, or with black, if chocolate, black covered cherries, chocolate covered cherries. Anyway, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. I think it comes through pretty straightforward with the, with the milk stout part, the, um, the chocolate covered cherries. Actually, I, this is, I, what I think makes the beer, uh, gives it a notch up. So this wouldn't, to me, this would have been an average milk stout, except the chocolate covered cherries give, gives it that little special nuance to it that gives it a leg up a little bit. There you so go. I'm going to give it an eight out of 10 and I'm going to, so because, uh, you know, because the name of the beer is Take My Heart, the first thing that popped in my head was Tony Braxton, Tony Braxton's Unbreak My Heart. You heard that song, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm going to pair with. Has. So uh, that's what popped into my head, Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton. Um, so to recap, as you just heard, I gave mine an 8 out of 10. Tony Braxton, Unbreak My Heart for a Social Projects, Take My Heart, The Milk Stout. Ray had the cake and bake, a pastry stout from Alpine Beer Company, paired it with George Strait's Chill of an Early Fall, and he gave it a nine out of ten. Ray, that's a solid lineup, sir. Oh, I've been waiting for those words, Mike. I was ready to go with them if you weren't. Yeah. You know? Here, you can do it. Ready to go. Mike, we had a solid lineup. Dude, we did. That's you Lisa. know what? You're right. Yeah, yeah I mean that is I'm, so on point it's on point you, and you know i gotta say i was thinking about this earlier you know what mike hot wings are year round and <laughs> yes they are I talk about football I was like i want hot wings again already <laughs> football hot wings and beer ah bring on i gotta fall. i gotta tell you something tell me so i bought 40 pounds of hot wings oh you're my hero i this weekend i smoked 10 pounds of hot wings yeah. After after they were smoked, I tossed them in my own special buffalo wing concoction sauce. Okay. And then I ate them. And it was incredibly delicious. Incredibly delicious, sir. Mike, I propose we have a moment of silence to uh reflect on your awesomeness as a man here. Sure. Ready to go. I feel so much more manly after that, Mike. Thank you. If uh, that's wow, I, I feel so good on the inside right now, reflecting on hot wings in your awesomeness. Mike. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe we should do plaques of where I lived growing up, so that in memoriam of where I lived or whatever, a significant oh. cultural and historical site. That's right. Boyhood home of Mike Bradley. <laughs> Somebody's alive now doing all this that they're actually going to do that for. 
There, yes. You know? Oh, man. So I'm sure that, that there are things, I don't, and I don't know, maybe it's different now, but Abraham Lincoln has like 20 different boyhood homes that are historic sites. So, and Damn. I know he was kind of a big deal, but right. so are we. Exactly. I mean, we're same level, you know? Yeah. 16th president, co-host, craft beer bucket list. Yeah, on par. Sure. <laughs> he, I, I don't see him uh, creating content. <laughs> I know. I don't I mean, see him with a following on Instagram. I don't either. He probably does have a following on Instagram. We just don't, you know. I mean, I, I don't follow. Say, it. <laughs> my yeah. Gettysburg address, you know, uh, stout episode. Uh, you right. know, I think we speak to a larger audience. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think in a couple hundred years, people are gonna be reciting our podcast uh, dialogue instead of the Gettysburg address. I, I think so. Actually, I feel really cringy for even saying that, so I would take it back. <laughs> no, I would not take it back. I, mean, I know, I know, rewriting history is painful, but you know, you know Mike, we are we are doing oh the heavy gosh. lifting right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> agents of change. Agents of change. And with that, wow. everybody, thank you for tuning in to another awesome episode of Craft Beer Bucket List. I love you. Mike loves you. You love us. And we know that because you give us five-star ratings on Apple Podcasts. You leave us amazing reviews telling us how much you love us. And you tag us in the beers you drink on Instagram. Love, love, love seeing all of that, you guys. So I'm not going to drone on and on and on. You know how to find us on social media. We appreciate all of you guys at Craft Beer Bucket List, by the way. So there, I said it. So, as always, please do me a favor. Don't drink and drive, but do drink local, and we will catch y'all on the next episode of Craft Beer Bucket List. Hey, Ray. Yeah. Adios. Adios.